Hello everyone and welcome to another video in the script case macros course. So this is a course where we're going through all of the script case macros and explaining what they do as well as providing lots of examples for how they work. My name is Nate Carpenter and I'm the instructor leading this course. So let's get started with another set of database macros. Today we're going to be looking at the macros for changing a database connection and for setting up a new database connection. So in script case, you have database connections that are defined as a set of credentials and settings for connecting to a specific database on a server. And you can change those out to different ones, or you can create ones dynamically on the fly. So we're going to be looking at those. We're going to be looking at four macros today. So let's go ahead and get started with the first one. So the first one, and we're going to look at the documentation for this, is the SC change connection macro. So it's very simple. We just give it the old connection and then the new connection, and it dynamically changes the application connection there. And then the opposite of that is the SC reset change connection. So this undoes what was just done in the previous macro that I showed you there. So it resets the change from the SC change connection macro. So those are the macros to change the connection. The next two macros are to set up a new one and to reset it. So setting up a new one is slightly more complicated. We give it a connection name, so that's a unique name that we give it. And then we give it an array of settings for that connection. And we'll look at those settings and what we can do with them in a second. But it dynamically creates a new connection. So then that connection can be referenced uh, to do database queries. And then the opposite of this one is the reset connection, SE reset connection new. So that resets the connection, takes it all away, and so that we're all done and back to the original connection that we were using. So let's go ahead and get started in script case and we'll look at the documentation for this and then get started with some examples for how these work. Okay, so here we are in the script case documentation and here are all the macros listed. You might have seen these before. Let's look at our SC change connection macro first. So that's our first one and then the SC reset change connection. So those are our two change connection macros. So I click on one of those. And here is the documentation for it. So I need the old connection and new connection names. And there's an example of that. And you can pass multiple ones in there if you want to switch them around. And you can also do it with some global variables too, um, so that you can parameterize those. And then here's the scope uh, for those and where they can be executed. And then there's a reset change connection macro as well. So let's go over to script case here. And I've got a grid set up and as well as a switch DB application. So let's go ahead and run the grid and the grid is just going to be showing us some data so that we can see when we change the connection here. So there's the data from our grid. And if we go to database edit connection, I have two connections set up so we can switch between these two connections. So I have films and films two. So these are two different databases set up on two different connections here. So I'll just use those films and films two name. So I've got this switch DB application set up. This is just a control application. And on it, I just have a radio button here. Let's go to fields, databases here. And this is just a radio button with two options. So films and then films two, and then the value of one for films and the value of two for films two, so that I can use that on the logic on the back end. So let's go ahead and run this so I can show you what it looks like. So there it is, just a very basic control application. So the user can select one of those, click OK, and it would switch the database connection. So now let's build out that logic. So let's go to events and on validate success. So we need to first see which option the user selected. So we're going to get the value out of there. So databases in the curly brackets there. And we're going to check if it equals one. So if it equals one, they selected the films database. So finish out that if conditional and then an else. So on the else condition, that means they selected the films to database. So let me put the comments in there. So films database, and then films to database on the else. Okay, so now let's copy our code from the script case documentation. So I'm just gonna copy that right there. That's all we need. I'm gonna put it in the films database connection. So we're gonna be changing from the films to, so that's gonna be the old connection. So we put in films two for the old connection and then films for the new connection. So that's what we're connecting to. Okay, put the semicolon in there and let me copy that and put that in the else. And we just need to switch those two parameters. 
So the old connection is going to be the films connection this time, and the new connection is going to be the films too, since that's the one they selected. So now we just need to have it redirect to the grid so we can see the changes that we made. So let's go ahead and save that, and then let's go over and find the name of that grid. So we go back here to home, and there's that grid, grid underscore actor. So we're going to use a script case macro SC reader to redirect to the grid actor. So if you're unfamiliar with this macro, there's going to be another video explaining what it does. But for now, it just redirects to that grid without any parameters. And it should have the new connection then all set up. So let's go ahead and run this now. And there we can choose our databases. Let's choose Films too. Click OK. And here we see the data is now different on the grid. There's only one record. We can go back now with the back button, select the Films database. That was the original one. And here we have new data again, showing that it's coming from a new database. So now all we need to do is reset this. So if we set it to Films, we could click Reset and it would go back to the original database. So we have the macro for this. So let's go back to the documentation. Now let's find that reset change connection macro. So there's a change connection and then reset change connection right there. Click on it. Just a very simple macro. It just erases the changes from the SC change connection. Very simple. We can just copy it. And then we're going to paste it over here. We're going to create a button. So we're going to go to buttons, new button. You can put this in multiple places, but a button makes it nice and convenient. It's going to be a PHP button. And we're just going to name it reset. So it's going to be a reset button. So there we go. And let's go ahead and make sure it looks okay. So capitalize it. So that's what it's going to look like. And then we just need to copy that one line of code from the documentation and it's going to reset the connection for us. So let's go ahead and run this now. And there is our reset button. We click reset and it gives us a little okay button. So it's reset the connection. Everything's done and we can continue in the default settings as it was before. So that's how you change a connection and reset a change of connection in script case. Now let's create a new connection. So let's go back to the documentation here and scroll back up to the top. And so our next two macros are the SC connection new and then SC reset connection new. Those are our two, two macros there. Let's click on SC connection new. So SC connection new is a little bit more complicated. We give it a connection name and then an array of settings there. And we'll look at what those settings are. And we need to make sure uh, that the macro does, that the name does not have any conflicts with any other connection names. And then here are the settings for the, uh, the connection there. So you've got the server, user, password, database, persistent and encoding. And then the drive is the type of database. So there's all the different databases supported by, uh, supported by script case. So we need to select the correct one. We're going to use SQL for our uses, our use cases here, uh, but you can use any of these here. So there we go. Let's go back over to our script case development environment. And I have another application set up for this. So we have set new connection here. And this is another control application. And I have some fields here to enter these settings. So the user could enter some settings that connect to an arbitrary database. So we have here the persistent, and this is just a yes or no here because that's what's required by the macro. And then the server, username, password. If you click password, that is a password field so that it redacts the, the UI, doesn't show what you're typing. And I went ahead and set that up for the user too. That's not necessary, but I wanted to be extra safe with security here. So I'll run that and this is what it looks like. So just a very basic form here, uh, control application. So you can enter in those settings and then click OK and then our logic will then set the new setting. So let's do that logic now. So I'm going to go to events and then on validate success right here. So this is after it's validated everything. And there's actually an example right here in the documentation. And we're going to copy that. This is pretty much set up here, but we just need to set it so that it uses our field values here. So here's our array of settings. First it is the driver. And this could be set up in the form too, but there's a lot of applications there. So I'm just going to do PDO MySQL, and then the server is going to come from the server field. So again, in the curly braces server, and then the user is going to be from the user field as well. And then password from the password field. So this is pretty straightforward, just getting all the values out of those fields 
and setting them equal to the correct values in the array. So database out of the database field. And then persistent is going to be the Y or N value from that, that radio button or the checkbox actually. So get that out of the persistent field and the encoding, I'm just going to set to UTF-8. That could be uh, lots of different options there, uh, but I'm just going to leave it at UTF-8 to keep it simple. And then we need to make sure that our connection name is unique because if it's not unique, then nothing is going to happen. That's what it says in our documentation. So I've got a line of code here to make sure that it's unique. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking the database that the user entered, putting an underscore in there along with the date timestamp, and then a random number between 0 and 999 inclusive. So that's going to make sure that is that the name is unique. And so right here, we won't have any issues with this note here where it says it needs to be unique and it won't make any changes if it isn't. So that way it's unique. So we first need to switch out the name here for our new name. And then our array connection is our settings there. And this should go ahead and set up a new database connection. And now I'm going to copy in some code that we use in our switch database application. So we're going to change the database connection to our new, our new connection. And then we're going to redirect to our grade. So here we're doing the SC change connection films and we're changing it to our new connection that we named and then we're redirecting to our grid. So just like we did before, but using our new database connection. Let's go ahead and run this now and it should work. So loading here and let's enter in our server. So I'm just going to do the local hosts. So enter in that, enter in my username for my database and then my password for my database. And then the database name, I'm going to connect the films to. And then I can set it to persistent or not. Go ahead and click OK then. And there we go. Now we're connected to our films to database, right? Like that. And we can go back as well, but let's go ahead and build out the logic then to reset this database, this new database connection. So let's go back to the documentation here. Let's go ahead and scroll up to the top and find our macro again. So there is our SC reset connection new. So that's going to reset the connection. And just like before, it's very, very simple. Just one line. So we just need to copy that one line. And we're going to put it in a button like we did before. So let's go to buttons, new button, PHP button again, and name it reset. And I'll go ahead and capitalize it this time. So it looks nice. Okay. And then copy that one line SC reset connection new, and then go ahead and run it. And now we should have a reset button. There it is. And we can click the reset button. And it reset it. So we can click the OK button and now we're back to the way things were before. So that's how you change a connection and create a new connection dynamically on the fly using script case macros. So I hope this was helpful for you and I hope you watch these other videos to see how the macros can help you in your development with script case.